In order to solve a transportation model problem, there are multiple steps which need to be followed. In this video, we look at the first step which is to formulate a transportation table. Let's use a real life example and see how we formulate a transportation table using it. A dairy firm has three plants located throughout a country. The daily milk production at each plant is given to us. So plant A produces 6 million liters of milk every day. Plant B produces 1 million liters of milk every day. Plant C produces 10 million liters of milk every day. Now each day the firm must fulfill the needs of its four distribution centers. The milk requirement at each center is given to us. So distribution center P has a requirement of 7 million liters per day. Distribution center Q has a requirement of 5 million liters per day. Distribution center R has a requirement of 3 million liters per day. And distribution center S has a requirement of 2 million liters per day. Now the cost of shipping 1 million liters of milk from each plant to each distribution center has been given to us in hundreds of rupees. So from plant A to distribution center P, the cost of shipping 1 million liter of milk is 200 rupees. Similarly, the cost of shipping 1 million liters of milk from plant A to distribution center Q is 300 rupees. So this has been expressed in hundreds of rupees for ease of calculation. So we have eliminated the zeros here. So 2 means 200 rupees and 3 means 300 rupees and so on. Now the dairy firm wishes to determine as to how much should be the shipment from which milk plant to which distribution center so that the total cost of shipment is the minimum. So we need to determine the optimal transportation policy. So this is the real life example where this dairy firm has three plants A, B and C having different capacities of production every day. And this milk produced in these plants is being shipped to the distribution centers and there are four distribution centers P, Q, R and S and each distribution center has a different requirement. So basically the distribution center is supposed to cater to the demand in a particular area. Let's say distribution center P is in the western region. So it is going to cater to the demand of milk for its customers in western region. Similarly, Q can be a distribution center which is located in the southern region. So this distribution center is supposed to cater to the demand of its consumers in the southern region. Now each plant can ship to any of the distribution centers. However, for shipping the milk from each of the plants to each of the distribution centers, there is a cost associated with it and the cost is different because of difference in the distance between each plant and each distribution center. So we have been given the cost of the shipment from each plant to each distribution center. And now we have to find out the best transportation policy so that the overall cost is minimized the overall transportation cost is minimized and at the same time the demand is being met. So let's understand this further. So let me draw the map of India to further understand this. Now there are four distribution centers in this scenario. So let's say that you know these four distribution centers are each located in the north, south, east and west regions. And let's denote these distribution centers 
with a circle so let's say this is one distribution center this is the second one this is the third one and this is the fourth one so let's say this is P Q R and S and there are three plants producing the milk so I'll take random locations of these plants this is just to understand this is not to scale or not to the actual distances which will reflect any correlation with the shipping cost so this is just to understand so let's take a plant A somewhere here so let's say this is uh, A I'm denoting plants with a square and let's say plant B is somewhere here so this is B and plant C let's say is here now each of the plants can transport milk to any of the distribution centers so A can ship to P A can ship to Q ship to R and to S similarly B can also ship to Q P S and R and the same case with C so C can ship to Q P R and S now we have been given the demand for each distribution center so P has a demand of 7 million liters of milk Q has a demand of 5 million liters of milk every day R has a demand of 3 million liters of milk every day and S has a demand of 2 million liters of milk every day so this is the demand so let's denote this as D Now we have also been given the supply capacity for each of the plants. So A can supply 6 million liters of milk every day. B can supply 1 million liters of milk every day. And C can supply 10 million liters of milk every day. Now we have also been given the cost of shipping the milk from each plant to each distribution center the cost of shipping from plant A to distribution center P is 200 rupees per milliliter of milk so A to P is 200 rupees so let's denote this as 2 A to Q is 300 rupees per milliliter so 3 a to R is 11 and A to S is 7 similarly for plant B B to P is 1 B to Q is 0 wow that means that it is located at the same location so B and Q are probably in the same premise or same campus B to R is 600 rupees and B to S is 1 now for plant C C to P is 5 C to Q is 8 C to R is 15 and C to S is 9 so as you can see here each distribution center can receive the milk from any of these three plants 
However, there is a cost associated with the transportation of milk from every plant to every distribution center. And the objective is to minimize the transportation cost holistically. So even if the cheapest for Q may be B, but maybe there is some other option available. And if we don't ship the milk from B to some other distribution center, then the cost at the other distribution center is going to be huge. So holistically, we want to find out the most optimal transportation policy. And that can be done using the transportation model. So the first step is then to create a transportation table. So in this table, let's note down the plants in the first column. So A, B, and C. So this column basically represents the sources or origins of supply. So these plants are producing the milk and therefore they'll be supplying to the distribution centers. Now let's note down the distribution centers horizontally. So P, Q, R and S. Now next we'll note down the cost of shipping from each plant to each distribution center in these cells. So there are two things which are supposed to go into this cell. One is the cost of shipping and second is the unknown which is the quantity that is going to be shipped. So the cost of shipping we can put it in another small box which is like this. So from A to P the cost is 200 rupees so 2 we can put it here. Similarly from A to Q the cost of shipping is 300 rupees so 3 comes here from A to R the cost of shipping is 11 from A to S the cost of shipping is 7 from B to P the cost of shipping is 1 from B to Q the cost of shipping is 0 from B to R the cost of shipping is 6 from B to S the cost of shipping is 1 from C to P the cost of shipping is 5 from C to Q the cost of shipping is 8 from C to R the cost of shipping is 15 and from C to S the cost of shipping is 9 now each of the plants has a certain supply capacity so let's note down the capacity here. So plant A has a capacity of 6 million liters per day. Plant B has a capacity of 1 million liters per day. And plant C has a capacity of 10 million liters per day. And similarly, each distribution center has a certain demand or requirement. So let's note down the demand here. So P has a demand of 7 milliliters, Q has a demand of 5 milliliters, R has a demand of 3 milliliters, and S has a demand of 2 milliliters of milk per day. So this table is known as the transportation table. And in this step one, we have to express the supplies from origin, which is in this case, the plants, the requirements at destinations, which in this case is the distribution centers and the cost of shipping from origin to the destinations in the form of a matrix. Now after we have formed this matrix, a check needs to be done to find out if the total supply and demand are equal. If yes, the problem is said to be balanced and if not, a dummy origin or destination is to be added to balance the supply and demand. So in this case, let's find out the total supply. So total supply is 6 plus 1 plus 10 
which is equal to 17 milliliters of milk per day and the total demand is equal to 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 3 plus 2 is 5 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 7 is 17 so again demand is also 17 milliliters of milk per day so here this total supply is equal to total demand and hence we can use the transportation model to solve this problem now the objective here is to find out how many units should be transported from each plant to each distribution center in order to minimize the overall cost of transportation. So we can denote the units to be transported from each plant to each distribution center as X. And we can also denote I and J where I is equal to the plant and J is equal to the distribution center. So for the first square, the units to be shipped from A to P, let's say is X, and it is from plant A to distribution center P. So this is X A P. For A to Q, X A Q. For A to R, X A R. And A to S, X A a s similarly for b to p x b p b to q x b q b to r x b r b to s x b s c to p x c p c to q x c q C to R, X, C, R, and C to S, X, C, S. So this is how we formulate the transportation table. And we can also add the total here for supply and demand, which is 17 in this case. In the next videos, we'll continue the same example and see how we can solve this transportation model problem.